right. Everybody excited for the big game today? Yeah. yeah. How many IU fans do we have? Raise your hand. IU fans. How many Purdue fans? Uh, all right, it's okay. Jesus still loves you. Okay. Right now, I know what you guys are thinking. Uh, you're probably out there thinking, why in the world did Anthony ask Nick to wrap up the series uh, about uh, physical health? Because I'm not exactly the epitome of physical health. Um, but if you guys uh, have known me for a while, or if you've been in RCC for a while, you, you've probably seen that uh, over the last year or so, uh, I've lost about 60 to 80 pounds, depending on what time of the year it is. You know, holidays, 60. The rest of the year, maybe 80. Um, and uh, what, what happened was about January 1st, 2017, I started a, a new journey uh, trying to take back my life and my physical health. Um, it was about a six to eight month journey. Ultimately, about July 4th or so was, was when I reached my lowest weight, uh, which was about 195 pounds, um, down from about 272, uh, which was uh, 195 was 10 pounds heavier than when I left uh, Huntington College. I played baseball at Huntington. So that was the best adult shape that I'd been in, you know, after being a kid and, and playing sports and stuff. So um, then August uh, 12th, the day before my birthday, two days before uh, my wife and, and my 18th anniversary, uh, we decided to go out on the lake, and um, against uh, my advice, we decided to go wakeboarding and skiing. I wanted to go tubing, seemed a lot safer, hadn't been skiing in a long time, um, and uh, had a little mishap and uh, tore what's called the fiscus tuberosity tendon off of my pelvis uh, in my right leg, blew the tendon off six centimeters off the bone, all three bands of my hamstring ruptured and it balled up behind my knee. Um, it was painful. felt like I got shot in the leg. Uh, the doctor that did the surgery, um, he actually uh, said that it's the most painful uh, leg injury that you can have, worse than an ACL tear, worse than an Achilles tear. Um, it's just really, really rare. Um, it's called a proximal hamstring avulsion. But, you know, I, I had the surgery, and uh, March the 6th, I go back for the last time. I'm supposed to be released for full activity. Right now, I'm allowed to jog and do some like lightweight training and light activity, which has been nice. I was kind of scared to do it at first because of how, how strange my leg felt, but I just started a, a couple weeks ago getting back on the treadmill and running a little bit. And I, I did learn the other day that um, uh, light activity is not an eight and a half minute mile for me. Um, my wife, she thought it was kind of funny and she was also worried because she thought maybe I tore it again. I, I tried to run a uh, a mile at that pace, uh, and, and my hamstring balled up or uh, cramped up on me, and Charlie Horst, and you pull the cord off the treadmill, you're one of those, you know, scream and yell type moments, but it was okay. It, 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 was, it wasn't near the repair. The repair's up high if, if Charlie Horst down low, so um, it was okay, but it's, it's been a challenge the last six months or so, about five, five and a half months now. It's, it's been a challenge um, to, to kind of maintain at least some resemblance of, of, of physical health because I, I, can't, I couldn't be active. The first five weeks after the surgery, I had, you guys probably saw me uh, come here, and I, I had this sling that wrapped around my waist and strapped my leg to, and it just hung there, and I, I couldn't, there was no weight bearing, I couldn't do anything, and then for several months after that, I, I, you know, I couldn't do anything other than the light um, physical therapy that they allowed me to do, and so it was kind of rough, especially going through the holidays, not to put all 80 pounds back on, but I, I, I did pretty well. Um, but, you know, I've got different goals for 2018, uh, so I, I brought along some pictures, and I kind of wanted to just share some pictures with you guys. If you don't know me real well, this will kind of help you understand the journey. Uh, the first picture is me, July 2016, playing at the fair. I like to refer to these days as my Chris Farley days, except I didn't have to live in a van down by the river. Um, but I was pretty big, a big guy. I was happy. You can see, I was smiling. I was happy. You know, I thought I was happy. Pretty big guy. Um, then fast forward exactly a year later. July of 2017, this is also playing at the fair, and there is no way that that music stand would have hidden me the year before. I stuck out on both sides of it. Um, and then this is right, this is the day I got hurt on the lake. This was the, the, the best shape that I had been in in probably 15 years, uh, the day before I got hurt on the lake. And I've got plans for 2018, right? I've got big plans. Um, God willing, hopefully this is what I'll look like January, or July of 2018. The guy, the, guy, the guy on the left, your left, not the guy on the right, I, that's, that's Josh Cunningham, and that's not physically possible for me. So uh, if you guys know, how many of you know Josh? He was here first service. You know Josh? You guys ever eat dinner with Josh or lunch or anything? You know that he doesn't get his physical uh, fitness or his, his, his uh, he-man physique from his diet? I've seen that guy put more food and carbs on a plate that should be possible according to the laws of physics. I mean, I've watched him eat like 
four peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, a plate full of mac- macaroni and cheese, you know, four bowls of soup, and, and, and he had a salad. But, you know, he gets this because he works like 26 hours a day. <laughs> so, exactly, exactly. You guys know Josh, and he just, you know, he hit the lottery in the you know, gene pool, and that's, that's not possible for most of us. But, you know, I, I do have goals. Uh, hopefully I don't look like Austin, his son, there by the end of the, end of the summer. But, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that most of us, we, we don't win the gene pool lottery, and we also don't have jo- jobs like Josh. Josh is a, a farmer. He works harder than anybody I know, and he probably burns more calories in a day than most of us can burn in a week, if, even if we do exercise. But... You know, we, all, we don't, all don't have that luxury. A lot of us work jobs. I have an office job. Most of the time I'm, I'm sitting behind a desk and, and talking on the phone and talking to people, and, and it's fast-paced. And you may have a job where about the only opportunity you have to eat in a day is fast food, right? I mean, it's, it's you know, like Anthony talked about a couple weeks ago, we're on the rallies plan of eating because that's all we have time to do. We got kids, we have work, we have classes, and it's really hard to, to find times to, to concentrate on ourselves and our physical health. Um, but we don't realize how those habits of health and those, those things that we eat and the things that we put in our body, how they affect our overall quality of life. We just, we don't see it. We don't realize it. So that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit today. Um, we've talked over the, the, the last couple of weeks uh, about the, the, the acronym ENERGY. Um, we heard Anthony talk about eating the first week and noticing our, our health and our habits. And last week he talked about getting rest and exercising, um, exercise, rest. And this week we're going to get a, a couple more, but um, you got to kind of understand a little bit about my background and, and why I'm up here. Because for me, eating was always uh, something that I did. Um, I was kind of on my my diet was you know if it tastes good, it's got to be good for me uh, type diet. I was definitely on the rallies plan of of eating, and I knew that wasn't healthy. You know, you ever you guys ever have things that you do where in the back of your head you know that it's not right and you know that it's not good for you but you still make excuses for it. And, and so my excuse was, well, if I die at, you know, 60 of a heart attack or, you know, diabetes or something, at least I enjoyed the 60 years that I spent here. Right? Made sense at the time. I was, I was using some logic, faulty logic, but I was using some logic to get to that conclusion. And uh, all of a sudden, I started having kids. And when I started having kids, things changed a little bit. Because for me, I don't know about you guys. Some of you might have had kids young, but for me, I started having kids late a little late in life, and I'll be 53 uh, when my youngest daughter, who's right over here, uh, graduates high school, and, you know, I, I wanted to make it to that graduation, and I, I do have a plan, though. Um, I'm going to bring along a cane to her graduation and just tell everybody that I'm her really young, hip grandpa, and my dad gets to be great grandpa, and then I don't have to be the, the really old dad, um, but man, that's, I, I wanted to make it to her graduation. I wanted to, I wanted to walk all three of my daughters down the aisle um, I want to officiate my girl's wedding. I'll leave the, the boy's wedding up to, to, the, to, to the, his bride and, and who they want to pick. But I want to officiate all three of my daughter's weddings if I can make it through it without crying. And, and I wanted to do things like, you know, hunt, fish, camp, go hiking, play golf, play softball, play city league basketball. Um, just, just be there for my wife and enjoy her company for as long as I, I can. And the plan that I was on, that Rowley's plan, wasn't going to get me there. Um, it, it just wasn't going to get me there. So, you know, I, I'm a foodie. I can remember a lot of my best memories involve food. I can remember 12 years old, I think it was 12, and uh, made the North-South All-Star team uh, with a couple of, of other guys from, from my town. And back then, you would go to a baseball camp, and you'd play in a, a series of games, but you'd also get some instruction and camp and stuff. And it was up north. I, I don't remember where it was, maybe Valparaiso, something like that. It was up near Chicago. And I remember my dad going out, uh, and we all stayed in a hotel room, and he went out and he got some barbecue ribs from one of those joints that's on the side of the road, and the guy's standing over the you know, grill sweating in it while he's, he's cooking on the side of the road, and it's 90 degrees outside. And he brought them back to the hotel, and that was my in- introduction to barbecue ribs. And we used to go on vacation, and, and I, I think I learned this from my father, and, and uh, we'd go on vacation and, and, and seek out the best place to eat. And we went to Town Center, or actually we went to Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. How many guys have been there? A lot of, a lot of, well, there's a little town there, uh, near there called Townsend, Tennessee, and there's a restaurant called the Back Porch Restaurant, and it's weird because it's only open like certain days, and, and it looks like just a house, um, but they got the best catfish. They must have like a lake out back or something, the best catfish I've ever had. 
And I used to, I prided myself on if, 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 if you were coming to me and you said, I'm going to go to whatever town it is here in Indiana, I used to pride myself on knowing what the best restaurant was to eat in whatever town you were visiting. And I'm not talking about you go to places and, and you say, you know, hey, guys, where, where's, where's the best place to eat in town? And they say, well, there's an Applebee's down on the corner. No, 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 I'm not talking about the Applebee's. That's not what I'm talking about. I'd look at that, that person and go, no, where's the best place to eat in this town? That was me. And so I just kind of put together a list the other day of places that I love, and this list came to me off the top of my head, which shows how much of a foodie I am. Um, you guys ever want a steak? Go to TC's and Battleground. Anybody been to TC's? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, there's uh, Nick's Kitchen or Rusty Dog in Huntington, Indiana, which is where I went to college. Um, Voodoo Public House in Peru. You been there? It's a good place. Uh, Louis Coney Island, Kokomo. Oh, somebody raised their hand. I got claps. I, I, got, I got applause in the first service. That's my personal favorite. Um, that's, that's only healthy if you believe that food that stays in your body for a half hour or less is healthy. Um, <laughs> uh, the top notch over in Brookston, uh, Bungie's Tavern, in Perkinsville. I know some folks that have been there, Wes and Grace. Um, the Beef House in Covington. Uh, Lafayette's got a couple places uh, that I really like, D.T. Kirby, South Street Smokehouse. But, you know, I was a foodie. That's, that's what I liked. The list goes on. So, for me, I always ate and viewed food as fun, as relaxation, as stress relief. That was the three things that, that I ate for. You know, it wasn't just for fuel. It wasn't so, to survive. So to make the change last January and start viewing uh, food as fuel was, was really difficult for me, but that's what I did. And along the way, about three months in, I found a program um, that, I, that I, I joined and became a part of, and they started to teach me some other healthy habits, some habits of health that kind of coincide and go hand in hand with healthy eating. And I started to notice that what we've been talking about this series, that energy is the outcome of honoring God with our bodies, I started to notice my energy level just changing incredibly. It's absolutely true. Ask my kids you know, what it was like when Dad was coming home and wanting to take him to the park to play instead of coming home and crashing on the lounge chair until I fell asleep at 9 o'clock. You know, and that was it, it just a whole different lifestyle. Uh, it affected my ability to sleep and work and, and play and have fun and, and even do what I do here on Sunday mornings because it, it made it easier to sing. I wasn't sick all the time. Um, you know, so using the rallies plan, uh, you got to eat, which I think we have that logo. We still have that one? Yeah, that's how I ate. You got to eat. Nick, Nick got to eat. You know, that's the way I looked at it. And I switched to a plan that I like to call the Land Rover plan, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but I, I noticed what was happening in my life and how it was affecting my ability to enjoy my days. Uh, I couldn't physically do some of the things that I wanted to do, I desired to do, especially with my kids. I, I couldn't enjoy the trips to the park or going hiking with my wife. Um, I wasn't enjoying playing softball anymore. I wasn't enjoying going golfing. As I started to get healthier throughout 2017, I started to notice with those energy level changes, I also started to enjoy some of the things that I didn't realize that I missed. Um, and, and one of those was just like being able to get down and back up off the floor Right? Without, without feeling like I was going to fall back over. You guys know how to... T I'm not picking on anybody because this was me and it, was a, it took a long time before I could convince myself that I needed to change this. But you guys know how to tell when you're, when you're starting to get really unhealthy? There's a trick. There's a test. Look down at your shoes. Are they tied in the middle or on the outside or inside? Because I got so unhealthy that I had to tie my shoes like this. Because I couldn't pick my legs straight up. And that's, that's one of those things that... Just little things that I started to notice and... So I started exercising and, and, and noticing the benefits of exercise again. And, and, you know, since I stopped playing college ball, I, I loved going out and playing golf, playing city league softball, playing city league basketball. I'm a competitive person. If you played ping pong with me, you know that. I mean, I just I, I don't like to lose. I'm competitive. And, and I started to enjoy those things again for, for the first time in years. I mean, years. Uh, I started hitting the golf ball about 30 yards further than I had the previous few years. And I think it was just because my stomach wasn't in the way of my swing anymore, and I could, I could take a normal swing. Um, I started to enjoy softball because I was a guy that, uh, you know, I could line a ball down the left field line or hit a ball in the gap, and I was content to jog to first because that's as far as I could go without needing oxygen. Um, this past year was the first year that I could hit a ball in the gap and actually take off running and enjoy it and feel good. I'm looking forward to doing that again this year. Um, you know, it felt like I was 20 again. It was, it, it was a big change. Everything in life became more fun. 
And, and for me, anyway, there was a certain aspects of having more energy that Jamie, my wife, wasn't too thrilled with. Um, Jeff Moss got that joke in the first service, but there might be kids here, so I won't divulge. Uh, but seriously, on days when I, I exercise, I seem to make more healthy choices. Like if I get on the treadmill and run, some people don't work like this. I know we're all wired differently. Some people, they get on the treadmill and they walk or they run. They go right to the cabinet and grab the Twinkie because they just burned off that 100 calories, right? Not me. If I exercise, if I make the decision to exercise, I will eat healthy for that day, week, month, however long it is because I don't want to waste the exercise. I like playing sports. I do not like to run. The only people that ran when I was growing up for fun were the track people, and we used to make fun of them when we were on the baseball field or the football field because we ran for punishment, right? That's, that's what most people do. I don't like to run, so if I get on the treadmill and run, I'm going to eat healthy because I'm not blowing that work. So um, as... As I, as I started going through this program, I noticed other things and I learned other things. And, and those things that Anthony talked about last week, that he made the statement that um, this might not be the most important thing that he'd ever spoke about or the most vital thing, but it was, in, you know, it had some value. I would challenge you guys, it has a lot more value than what you think. Well, he talked about last week exercise and getting proper rest, resting, taking that day off to observe that, that Sabbath day, getting enough sleep. It helps you manage stress. It, help, it helps you physically. It affects your physical health more than you could ever know. It's very important. I started to notice that uh, losing weight actually made it easier for me to sleep. Um, I wasn't snoring uh, anymore, which you know, consequently affected my wife's ability to sleep also, which I think made our marriage better because she's not really a morning person. And when I kept her all night long snoring, she might not have been real friendly in the morning. Um, so that made life easier on me. So cool by, byproduct of, of getting healthier. Um, and, you know, my, my back wasn't sore all the time. I didn't have acid reflux anymore. It went away. I used to take acid reflux pills over the counter or a prescription all the time, and I, I don't have to do that anymore. Um, but, and seriously, it, it just created, creating some better habits of health snowballed into better and better choices throughout 2017. But the crazy thing is, is God has a plan sometimes, and, and he does things that we don't understand. And despite the fact that I had regained my health and was starting to feel better about life and starting to enjoy things and noticing on a small scale the differences that it made. Something changed on August the 12th when I I was injured on the lake and tore my hamstring. And my physical health was gone in an instant. It was just gone. And all those things that I had enjoyed up to that point and the changes um, that had happened quickly were taken away. And that's the moment when I realized that We don't lose our health in an instant. Most of us don't. I mean, I know there's some extenuating circumstances, but most of us lose our health over a long period of time, one bad decision at a time, one day after day after day. And at least for me, I I adjusted through the years with the way I I changed and the way I felt a little bit at a time. And so I didn't notice... uh, how that affected me and, and really how miserable I was trying to do some things until I got healthy over a longer period of time and then it was taken away all in one moment. And then I realized real fast how much I was enjoying my life after I got healthy and, and now it was gone. We don't instantly lose our health. We don't wake up 80 to 100 pounds overweight. We all have habits of health. And normal people tend to look at... Uh, at an individual is either sick or not sick. When I say normal, I'm not, you know, I'm normal. I'm not, I'm not a critical care physician. I'm not a, a doctor. I'm not in the medical profession. And we tend to look at people as either sick or not sick, right? That's how we view people. Well, a doctor, a critical care physician, or somebody that's, you know, in the medical profession, they view people a lot of times as either healthy or slowly inching towards getting sick. They don't view us as sick or not sick. They view us as healthy or becoming unhealthy. And it's those, those bad habits that pertain to eating and our ability to notice our state of health, our exercise and how we, we take care of our bodies and also our rest levels. It's those bad habits that outweigh the good habits and that's why we're slowly graduating towards being sick. Think of it this way. Uh, the creator of the program that I'm on also created MetaFast. He's a critical care physician, one of the first in the United States. And and the program is awesome, and he's got this book that you read along with it. And in the book, I'm going to summarize, but he, he says, picture it like this. 
if we all just have five habits of health, which there's more, but if we all have five, and three of those habits are bad habits, and two of those habits are good habits, you are not a healthy person. You are a person on your journey to getting sick. If three of those habits are good habits and two are bad habits, you're probably maintaining your health. But if we can get to a point where four or five of those habits are good habits, we are doing our part to extend our lives and make them the best that they can be. John, in the third book that he wrote for the New Testament, says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Week one and week two of this series, Anthony concentrated on a verse in in 1 Corinthians 6 where Paul says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. There's a reason why Paul and John wanted us to understand that our bodies are important. That reason is because they're vital to why we were created to be here on earth. We all have a ministry, it may look a little bit different for each of us, but there's also an aspect of it that's the same. We all have a a circle of people that we have some influence in their lives. They trust us, we trust them. They may look to us for advice, or, or sometimes even prayer, instruction, encouragement. If you look to your left, and go ahead, and I'm going to pay attention because I want to see who knows their left and their right. Look to your left. All right, very good. Look to your right. If you guys, there's nobody to your right, sorry. You're probably sitting next to somebody. Chances are you're sitting next to somebody that that falls in that circle. You didn't wander in alone today. Most likely, there's somebody here that invited you or encouraged you or somebody that you want to encourage. They fit that category. Our bodies are important to the mission that God gave us, which is simply to, to live a healthier life the longer we live, the more opportunity we have to point people towards him and help people understand how easy it is to find Jesus. And it really is easy. It took a freak injury and a sudden loss of my health and and my ability to really enjoy life for me to realize that we have to choose what we want most over what we want now. We'll touch on that a little more lately. Now, Here's the part where if you're not a follower of Christ... You might think, you know, you might come in here today and you think that the, you know, the Jesus followers are crazy and we get that. There may be somebody in the room like that. But tune back in right here because for a while I'm going to talk about a couple of things that are really applicable to all of us, whether we're Christ followers or not. Um, the, the energy acronym that Anthony's been using during this series, uh, you know, don't put it up yet, but we, we found the first four uh, for the first two weeks were eating, noticing, exercising, resting, and this week, we're going to get to the last two letters. It's very simple. They just flow right together, the last two letters. Now you can put it up there, setting goals for you, setting goals for yourself. I joked at the beginning of the message that my goal was to, to look like Josh Cunningham, and that's not really my, my goal because, honestly, I'm smart enough to know that Josh is just a freak of nature, and I can never look like that. Um, but, I, but I do have goals for this year, and, and some of those goals, you know, despite... Besides looking forward to March 6th, when I can start to, to do normal things again and have full activity, um, some of those goals this year are to be a better husband because getting healthy and changing my, the way I ate and the, the way I lived made me a better husband. It gave me the energy to spend time with my wife and do things with her. It made me a better father, and I want to continue to be a better father. I want to be a better friend. I want to be a better son. I want to be a better uh, employer, a manager, um, supervisor, and And most of all, I want to be a better Christ follower. I want to be the best that I can be. One enormous uh, spiritual, biblical principle found in the Bible in Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 22 through 24, and it gets overlooked a lot. It says, put off your old self, which is wrapped up in your old life, and basically deceitful, and pretty pretty much your old life's going to lie to you. But to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, put on your new self, which is created after the likeness of God. And I, I don't know about you guys, but God probably didn't, you know, doesn't look like me in my Chris Farley days. You know, he, he's a lot better than that. And I want to be more like him. Eating healthy, recognizing our health and, and, and our habits of health, exercising, deserving some rest according to God's advice, setting goals to be the best self we can be are just a few of the areas we can put off the old man, put on the new man. In other words, just make a positive change in our life. And, and our body, our mind, our spirit... The health of each of those aspects of our life affects the others as well as affecting others. 
So how do we do it? And I'm not going to give you like a 12-step program or something like, you know, do this first, do this second, do this third. No, that's not, that's not what I'm talking about. How do we find the will and the drive to set goals for ourselves when it comes to our physical, our spiritual, our mental health? It's very simple. We've got to have a big why. You've got to have a big why. Why do you want to get healthy? There's a ton of reasons to get healthy, but which ones really work? Because I see people all the time... Um, I'm a physical health coach for the program that I'm a part of. They give you an opportunity to coach other people if you really uh, fall in love with the, with the program. And it works for 90% of the people that, um, that I work with. And, and, you know, the reason is the why. Over the past seven or eight months, I, I've seen people with whys that are a lot intrinsic. Like, it's just, it's of only value to them. You know, I want to look better in a swimsuit, or I've got, you know, I want to feel better while I'm doing this, you know, for my... And that's okay. Some of those work. Sometimes it's as simple as just being sick, of, sick and tired of being sick and tired. And those can work. But usually the whys that work go deeper than that. The whys that work usually center around something extrinsic or outside of yourself, somebody else in addition to yourself. Some of the great reasons that I've heard for people getting healthy that have worked for them are, I want to feel better so I can coach my son's soccer team. That's a good why. It's concentrating on somebody else. There's an there's a, there's a extrinsic motivator there. I want to be around to see my grandkids. I want to see my kids grow up and make lives for themselves. I want to see what they turn, how they turn out and what they you know, turn into. I want to be there for my wife or husband until I'm old and gray, and I want to leave them alone. And this is a good one. I've heard this one a lot. I want to walk down the aisle at my wedding and present the best self possible to my future bride or, or groom. That's a good why. These are, these are whys that work. Um, Dr. Anderson that developed the program that I, that I joined has a, a saying. He says, when your why is strong, your will is strong. When your why is weak, your will is weak. We will not make goals for ourselves and achieve those goals if we don't have a big why. God wired us to, to, to build up others. That's why it, it works so much better when we have an extrinsic motivator and not just an intrinsic motivator. It works better when we're concentrating on, on others because God wired us to do life together. That's what we believe here at RCC. It's really cool. It, you know, we do life together. Life is better together, and, and so that's why it works. I, by the way, I, I know why they keep water on the stage because this whole time when I do public speaking, I, don't, I, don't, I love playing and singing. The whole time I'm doing this, I feel like I'm going to throw up and you get that cotton mouth feeling. But there's, there's another key aspect to the why that we probably don't think about very often. And the last aspect is ministry. Once we understand why God placed us here on this earth and created us uniquely for a unique purpose, we start to understand why it's so important for us to try and maintain the best version of ourself possible. We understand that it's not just about losing weight. Getting healthy isn't just about losing weight. It's about what we have to offer and what we have to give to the ones that we love and others. Kind of look at it like this. Uh, when it comes to just eating healthy and, 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 and how that affects our ability to, to, to help others and to love others, I said earlier that I was a, a part of the Rallies plan of eating and I changed uh, January 2017 to the Land Rover plan. Let me explain that real quick. Um, my wife has always loved, she's fell in love with the style and the look of a Land Rover. So this past March, I went and bought her a used Land Rover. I would not advise buying one, by the way. It's probably one of the worst decisions I've ever made. When I, a, light, a tail light went out and I went to the auto parts store to get a tail lens and it was nine bucks. I knew at that point that I was in trouble and it was a bad decision and I can't wait to get rid of that car. But before I drove it off the lot, the guy that sold it to me looks at me and he says, hey, don't put regular unleaded fuel in this, ga- in, this, in this car. Use only premium gas. I'm sure we've all heard that. We've driven vehicles, and they advise, you know, use uh, a high-grade, you know, octane gasoline in it. But I kind of laughed it off because none of us do. And he goes, no, 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 really. Seriously. It's a dual-cast system. It's dual-turbo. If you put regular gas in it, it's going to gum it up, and it's not going to perform well. And I was, I was just in the start of that phase where I was starting to look at food as fuel instead of, you know, fun and enjoyment. And it hit me. Good fuel in, good performance. Bad fuel in, bad performance. And that affects so many areas of our life. For me, it affected you know, just not getting sick all the time because I was putting things in my body that my body craves and desires to stay healthy instead of craves and desires to stay satisfied for fun reasons. So food is fuel. The Land Rover plan of eating works a lot better than the rallies plan. Anthony said it last week. I touched on it a little bit earlier. We have to choose what we want most over what we want now. The book of Proverbs, I kind of like this verse in relation to this. 
Proverbs is uh, just a good daily reading tool. It's got a lot of things that you, know, you read and they can apply to our lives no matter where we're at. And one of the things it says is don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today. And this can be applied to many areas, but think of it this way when it comes to our physical, mental, and spiritual health. Today, I can choose to eat something or I can choose to do something that's bad for me and I can put off the healthy thing until tomorrow, right? And a lot of times that's how we live, but there's a flaw in that logic. And here it is. It takes doing something for an extended period of time to make a habit, to make it a habit in our lives. So if we put it off until tomorrow, we'll put it off until tomorrow, and we'll put it off until tomorrow, and we're just one day further away from reaching our our ultimate goal. But if we choose to do the healthy thing today over the unhealthy thing, whatever the choice might be, we get one day closer to making that healthy choice a habit, one day closer to reaching what we want most over what we want now. We all have a purpose in this world. God created each of us just a little bit different than the person next to you. And sometimes I wonder why. I'm I'm one of those people that got to figure things out. It's got to be black or white, and I struggle with the gray. And I, you know, I've I've often questioned, you know, why why are why is everybody just a little bit different? And I kind of like to think this isn't biblical. I just kind of like to think of it this way. I think we're all created just a little bit different because the person sitting next to you needs you to be exactly who you are. For them to be their best self. It's huge. You were perfectly designed. God designed you just like him. So why not try to maximize and optimize your potential by staying healthy. And giving God and others, other people, the best you possible. Guys, I hope you understand that this this series has not been a sales pitch. Not a sales pitch. It's not a guilt trip. Trust me, because... I would have gotten healthy a long time ago if it was a guilt trip. If somebody was a good enough salesperson to convince me to try their diet program and it really worked, I would have gotten healthy years ago. But it didn't take that. It took me making a decision that I wanted to change the way I was so I could affect other people differently, mostly my family. But it gave me the ability to affect others even outside of that circle. If you're here and you do want to get healthy and that's something that you're, you're considering, you've struggled with, and today something you know, maybe clicked, I would encourage you, um, it's not a sales pitch, but talk to me. I love to talk to people. I can help you on program or off uh, getting healthy. Just understand those habits of health. So can Lucas back there. He's lost, well, you lost me, like 50 pounds, 45 so far. And there's other people here that have been a part of the program also, and it, it absolutely works. Um, but this, this series has, has really been about presenting a different way to view our health and why it's important for us to to be the best self we can be. You might be sitting here and nothing's connected so far. You don't have that intrinsic why yet. Nothing's really made sense. It's fallen on deaf ears. You don't have that extrinsic why yet. It just hasn't quite clicked. But coming back to the Christ followers in the room, I can promise you one thing. I promise you this. God has a huge why for your life. He created you to do great things. He created you to influence those people around you. He created you to make a difference. He gave us a body. It's just a suit you know, that we're, we're going to wear until we get that perfect body in heaven. But I would encourage you to try to keep it healthy because if we're given a purpose, why not try to be the best self we can be and maximize that purpose? Right? God put us here for a reason. Father, we love you. We thank you. For this series, we know that it's been challenging and, and, and a little bit different, and it's not something that we've probably heard too many times at, at, at church, but God, it is important because you have a huge why for each and every one of us. It could just be as simple as reaching one person for the gospel with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to be a hundred or a thousand. Just one is huge if they get to see you and get to go to heaven and don't have to live that alternate life. So we just pray that you would continue to encourage us as we move forward to focus on those things that will help us get physically and mentally and spiritually healthy. Be with us as we worship today. These just three amazing worship songs. Thank you for this band and the, the time that they pour into it and the talent that you've blessed us with at this church. And we love you. We, we look forward to what you're going to do in and through us and in and through revolution. In Jesus' name.